Hello everyone, this is Andrew from Sommo, where we help companies all over the world build amazing no-code and low-code solutions using Bubble, Webflow and uh, several other platforms. In today's video, I will show you how to use uh, Bubble Data API as a no-code backend for your application. Well, typically Bubble is used as a, both a front-end and backend for your application giving the options to log in, uh, users, uh, build uh, custom logic applications, etc. But Bubble itself can be also used just as a standalone uh, backend if you choose to or need to maintain your frontend on other uh, framework or tool and solution and use Bubble just as a database and uh, API provider. To start using uh, Bubble as a backend, you would need to first make uh, upgrade your Bubble application to a paid plan, either personal or professional or agency, like in my case. Go to API and enable both of these workflows, uh, both backend workflows and uh, enable data API. Uh, and of course, uh, go to your data and define your data schema, your users, uh, products or company. For example, in this case, I created a couple of simple uh, models with the companies that have founded ad location logo title, etc. Uh, and uh, that's it, pretty much it. Generate your uh, API token, that would be your admin token with which you can access any uh, data in your uh, database. And uh, in the data API section in the bubble documentation, you can find documentation how to make um, REST API calls to your uh, database by creating data, modifying it, deleting, getting a singular item or a list of items. Let's make an uh, example request with uh, uh, this with our API token using bearer here and extending it here and getting a list of our companies. Here they are, the companies that we have in our uh, database. Uh, that is of course great, but uh, as uh, any uh, application, you might want to protect your data and allow access uh, for your users, not to the whole uh, database, but only to certain um, rows in your certain collections in your database. For that, you would need to authorize that. Authorization comes uh, in the section of introduction and the bu bubble explains how to uh, issue a user token, not just API token for individual users. For that, you would need to go to your uh, bubble backend workflows, that's why we activated them there, and create two API workflows. Here I have just one for, uh, you can name them however you want, and the important part is that inside your workflow that it performs an action login user or sign up user. Uh, of course it needs to accept like a mail password in order to login them, and it's just a standard a bubble action to login. Having this workflow, you can trigger it then, uh, as uh, for example, like right here, trigger your workflow, login, and pass your email and password in the uh, body parameters. As a response, Bubble would give you a token that would be now a user token. You can copy and use it again for making a request to your uh, database. Let me update it to the user token and make a request again. So far, nothing changed. It changed because we didn't uh, define any privacy rules or restrictions on how our how access to our data is limited. Let's create, for example, a company uh, privacy rule. It doesn't matter how we call it, and define, for example, that only when current user company is uh, this company, they can find it and uh, read it. Uh, and let's make the same request with the user token for list of all companies. As you can see, before they returned the whole list, and now it returns just one. The particular company where I'm as a user, uh, uh, that is the same as user's company. So this way you can define pretty much complex relationships and flows and protect uh, securely your data and make secure API calls and uh, can build any front end for your application uh, accessing this data. What I uh, 
find it hard to working with uh, Bubble API is there, for example, uh, searching their fields. Uh, there, um, when you need to search a collection by uh, text or by equals certain uh, value, you can do that through search constraint. Again, that is uh, here on the Bubble documentation. And it works in a way that you pass with your um, request uh, constraint uh, key with an array of this constraint that have different, uh, can search by different key, or have different types, for example, like text contains and value of tech. In this case, for example, I try to find all the companies where uh, the uh, name contains a tech. Right now, I cannot find any probably because I need to remove my privacy rule that didn't allow me to find it. And with updated one, yeah, it finds me to companies where the name is Uptech. As you can see, it's uh, quite not uh, uh, obvious to work with them and uh, they have certain limitations. For example, that uh, you cannot even write or query, for example, whether title or location contains certain set text. You can either search in one particular field or through, the, through all of the fields. Uh, and you cannot define, for example, like uh, different logical operations like contains uh, text uh, and um, let's say price equals to certain amount or greater than. So it makes it a bit hard to uh, work uh, with uh, bubble.api in this respect when you need to filter your uh, data. But other than that, it's quite great and powerful and can be a powerful uh, add-on or backend provider for your uh, no-code or low-code solution. Let me know how do you like uh, Bubble.API, whether you find it uh, useful, or what was your experience working with it. Uh, would be glad to hear. Thanks for watching and take care.